Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Muddy Outdoors, Fuse Accessories, Frigid Forage, Trophy Rock, Scott Archery, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Execute Scent Control, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scent Master, Yeti Coolers, Quiet Cat, Non-Typical Wildlife Solutions, Deer Grow, Icon Cameras, and Nikon. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. On today's episode, I'm going to talk some more uh, about shooting the bow. I've got some more tips I'm going to throw out there. This time I'm going to focus on aiming. And then we're also going to uh, uh, make another trip into Chef Aaron Neal's kitchen, and he's going to show us how to make catfish tacos. So hopefully this is an episode that you're going to enjoy. Hopefully you learn something and, and uh, get your uh, appetite up for some catfish tacos. So let's talk about aiming the bow. In the last uh, two episodes, I've gone over the gear uh, that I've got on my bow and why I use what I use. I talked about the surprise release last week and why I felt like that was so important. And now I'm going to talk about the final stage, and that's uh, the, the whole process of aiming. And there's a lot of different um, philosophies on how to aim. And I'm not the greatest shot in the world, but fortunately I know people who are. And what I've learned, uh, I've picked up from these guys, and that's what I'm going to hand off to you. So let's, let's talk first about the length of time that you can aim. And there's been a lot of studies done on concentration, and it's really tough to concentrate on one subject for more than seven seconds. So from the time you hit full draw, settle in, and you get your pin close to where you want it and you lock in, you basically have about a seven second window there. Uh, so figure on, you know, somewhere from the time you start the process uh, until the time the shot goes off, somewhere in the four to five second range is, is a, a pretty good standard to shoot for. Another subject is, you know, one eye versus two. Do you close your left eye or your non-dominant eye when you're aiming, or do you keep it open? Uh, or, in my case, I squint it. And uh, I do that because I don't have a really strong dominance uh, between my two eyes. If I don't squint my left eye, my left eye can take over in low light situations. Obviously, that's gonna result in a lot of problems. So, in, in order to avoid that, I squint my left eye and that eliminates any dominance issues between the two eyes. But it also gives me that extra field of view that I need if the deer is moving into my shooting lane or just to kind of stay on top of what's happening around me. I feel a lot more comfortable if I can use both eyes and even squint it, I can still see what's going on. I just don't have, like I said, that, that's, that cross dominance or the, the conflict of dominance between the two eyes. Uh, that's why I do it. Uh, the experts say whatever you do, you gotta do it exactly the same way every time. Probably in most situations, um, closing the non-dominant eye is the most conservative method of aiming because there's never going to be any problem with the other eye uh, jumping in and taking over the sight picture. So that's uh, those are a couple of, of you know aiming philosophies. Uh, the final one that I'm going to touch on is actually um, what does it look like? What does the pin look like on the target? And we've talked about the surprise release. And we're getting away from timing the shot. So we don't have this mental now command that we bring up as soon as the pin gets onto the spot. And that's, what, that's where target panic comes from. It comes from that attempt to time the shot. Uh, what I'm doing, and, and what the guys who are really good at shooting the, a bow are doing, is floating their pin uh, around the spot that they're trying to hit. It's not necessarily locked in one spot. And that's kind of a, a misconception, I think, of archery, is that you can get your pin to stop on the spot. Um, it's gonna float, you know, in small little circles. Some people make a figure eight. Some people make a little small circle. They, they keep the bow moving or they keep it floating. And their job is just to keep it as close to the center as they can while they're working through this, this aiming configuration that they've selected. Uh, I don't really have any specific um, movement that I try to duplicate every time. I'm just trying to float it on or around the spot. And it's surprising when it drifts off and the, and the bow fires, the arrow seems to find its way back to the spot anyway. And I think the biggest reason is because you're always trying to recenter it. So anytime you're, you're away from the spot, you're always trying to move it back to it. 
so your body has this natural centering ability. So you shoot a lot more accurately under those situations than you know, maybe what you think you would. Um, so the key there is don't be focused on trying to make your pin stop. That's what gets you in trouble. Let it float while you're squeezing. Floats, floats, you squeeze, the shot goes off, and it's surprisingly more accurate than you think it's going to be. You have to trust the process. Now, the final thing I'm gonna touch on is your breathing. You take a deep breath, and then you exhale. You know, you take a deep breath while you're drawing the bow. Then you, you exhale half of it while you're preparing to aim, and then you hold it while you, while you fall into that five or six second, uh, you know, or four or five second, whatever that is, of when you're actually executing the shot. When the pin is actually, you know, where you want it, um, at that point you're just holding your breath. So I take a deep breath when I'm pulling it back. Run halfway out, hold it. Make the shot. So these aren't uh, ideas that I've come up with on how to shoot a bow better. These are ideas that I've received or, or, or taken from some of the best archers in the whole world. Guys like Randy Ulmer and uh, Pete Shepley from his early days was a great target archer. Uh, John Dudley, um, a really strong hunter slash archer. Uh, these guys have all spent years and years and hours and hours each day and, and over the course of a long time coming up with the perfect system. So I've just taken their ideas and now I'm passing them on to you. So let's take a couple shots here and uh, then I'm gonna move on and uh, we're gonna find out how to make catfish tacos. Hi, I'm Chef Aaron Neal. This week on Midwest Whitetail, we're gonna do one of my favorite recipes, blue catfish tacos. I'm gonna hand my partner Andy this fish so he can get it fried up, and I'm gonna come back inside and put together the rest of the ingredients for the tacos. There you go, Ange. Thank you, get sir. Get your skull on it, would you? <laughs> First, you wanna half your tomatoes. Real simple. You got a good sharp knife. And just go right down through them. This ain't the sharpest. Don't cut hot butter. Next, we're gonna julienne the onion. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Take the peel off. Anytime you're slicing or dicing anything, you want to keep your fingers tucked. Thumb behind them. Next, we're going to go with our cabbage, coleslaw mix. Dressing. You don't want to get too much of that because it just gets sloppy, but you just can feel the right amount. Something to start with, it don't matter what it is. See all the different colors in there, the red tomatoes and the red onion. When you get all this mixed together, you can just set it in the refrigerator. And let it set until your fish is done. Andy's back with the fish. I'm going to show you how to assemble the one. Not that it's all Put a little of that on there. Put some cheese on that for me, Andy. Come on, Andy, a little more than that. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> See what she tastes like. Mm. Blue catfish tacos, folks. Can't always beat them. Till next time, I'm Chef Aaron Neal. This is Midwest Whitetail. Good luck and good hunting.
Well, that's it for this week. I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.